This surah is one of the most powerful surahs ever revealed in the Quran about the value of gaining Islamic knowledge. And when you read the surah, you'll be overwhelmed by understanding how valuable Islamic knowledge really is. Uh, it, was, it was revealed, so when he initially came to Medina, actually the last part of the surah was revealed first. Now we know that of the people that were given the books before us, the two largest nations are the Jews and the Christians. Now the problem with the Christians was that they did things without actually checking whether it was actually permitted or not. Whereas the problem with the early Jews is that they do not rule according to the book that they have been given. And as a result of this, they actually do not act upon the knowledge. So the difference between the Christians was that they acted without knowledge. Whereas over here, the problem with the Jews was that they did not act upon the knowledge that they already had. So why is this important in a context of talking about gaining knowledge? Is that action and acting upon the knowledge is part of gaining knowledge. As Ibn Qayyim says, there are three steps to gaining knowledge. First is to learn, second to memorize, third is to act. And then the fourth is to teach. And that is why many of us don't grow in our knowledge. We stop at the first level, we don't even memorize, nor do we act upon it, and very little of us even teach it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of Allah, the Rahman, the one who is generally merciful to everything, ar-Rahim, the one who is specifically merciful to believers, yusabbihu lillahi, every single thing praises Allah, ma fi samawat, everything in the heavens, wa ma fi ard and everything in the earth, Al-Malik, Al-Quddus, Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim. As for Allah, He is the true Malik because no one else possessed it before Him. He did not buy it from anybody. He was a true owner. He actually created it. And so as a result, every single thing ultimately belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including us and our bodies. So Al-Malik is a true possessor of wealth and the true possessor of everything in existence, and that is Al-Malik. He is the king. The king has a right to be obeyed, right? Al-Quddus means purify or to raise up above all impurities. So Al-Quddus is someone who was removed from all filth. As-Salam is close to the name of Al-Quddus except that Al-Quddus also means raise up high. And the meaning of As-Salam is the perfect God, someone who is completely perfect in every single way. And Al-Aziz, Al-Aziz is the one who has Izzah and honor. And that is apparent from his statements, that is apparent from his writings, that is apparent from his speeches. This is Al-Aziz and Al-Hakim, the one who has hikmah and his hikmah is so much that he has been the king over all of creation. Does that make sense? <laughs> he is the one who sent, Ummi means the unlettered people. Unlettered people meaning the ones who have no knowledge. So Ummi is someone who does not have the ability to read or write the Arabic language, though of course they had the ability to understand and recite it, read it. He is the one who sent to the Ummiyin. Meaning, look at the blessings of this great king, is that the first of his blessings is that he has sent to the unlettered people, someone who will make them knowledgeable. So what is it? He sent to them a messenger, Rasulam, minhum, from themselves. Yatlu alayhim, the first thing this messenger does is yatlu alayhim ayatihi. He teaches them the tilawat al-Quran. This verse shows, or this first part of the verse shows, that there is a blessing and reward in reciting the Quran even without understanding. Him. The second thing he does is that he purifies them. So he taught us the Quran. Not only that, but his mannerism. So when we are purified, that's when we grow. And that's when we grow in the eyes of Allah and we grow in the eyes of humanity as well. Number third thing he does is الكتاب, He teaches them the book. This is the effect of Al-Aziz. Is that in order to understand how honored this God is, we actually ponder on his books. This is the third blessing Allah gave us. Is that the Prophet explained the Quran. How did he explain it? With his words, with his actions, and with his statements. Okay, and number four is wal hikmah, and hikmah meaning wisdom. What were the four things? Tilawat al Quran, tazkiyat al nafs, purification of the soul, then tafsir of the whole Quran, and then sirah and sunnah of the Prophet. If in our homes, and in our madrasas, and in our schools, and in our universities, there could be a way where every single Muslim does these four things only, minimum. This would be more than enough Islamic knowledge for the basic level of 
every believer. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالِ مُبِينٍ And before this, they were in manifest error. وَآخَرِينَ مِنْهُمْ And many others like them, meaning like us. لَمَّا يَلْحَقُوا بِهِمْ Have yet to pass away, meaning have yet to join them. وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Meaning this hidayah is a mercy not only for the companions, but for all the generations after us, those who have yet to join them. So this is a manhaj and a curriculum for us in our time as well. ذَلِكَ فَضْلُ اللَّهِ That is the blessing of Allah. Meaning the blessing, the true blessing of Allah is knowledge first of all. This is what the scholars say, that knowledge is better than money. Because money when you give away, it goes away. Knowledge when you give it, it only increases. يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَاءَ That he gives to whoever he wills. So therefore, this verse shows that if Allah wants good for you, he will give you knowledge. And if he does not want fadl for you, he will not give you knowledge. So it must be something you have done for which Allah has given you this blessing and this opportunity to gain knowledge. Those who are not here, those who are forbidden from this, it may be because of a sin that they have done for which Allah has not given them the knowledge. Wallahu dhul fadl azim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the giver of all blessings and all fadl. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ حُمِّلُ التَّوْرَةِ Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves to the example of those people who have knowledge but they have never benefited from it. Who were given the Torah in order to carry. ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْمِلُوهَا But they did not carry it. Meaning they carried it but they did not carry it properly. كَمَثَلْ Like the example. الْحِمَار Like the donkey. يَحْمِلُ أَصْفَارًا That carries manuscripts on its back. بِئْسَ مَثَلُ الْقَوْمِ الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ What a poor example of the people that disbelieve or lie against the ayat of Allah, against the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the problem with those people or some of those that were given the books before, that they might have the book with them, but they have not benefited from it because they have not read it, nor have they applied the knowledge. That's why they were misguided. Knowledge comes before action. And once you have the knowledge, then you must act on it. وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ This verse is very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not guide the sinful people. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah said in the tafsir of this verse, he said, if Allah does not guide the sinful people, that means when you do a sin, it will lead to another sin. Once you sin, you have started the slippery slope of disbelief. Once you sin, you must break the cycle of sinning. Break the cycle of sinning with tawbah. Break the cycle of sinning by doing good deeds. Break the cycle of sinning by giving sadaqah. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ هَادُوا Say, O oh, those who have hadu. Hadu means to repent to Allah. إِنْ زَعَمْتُمْ If you do indeed believe, أَنَّكُمْ أَوْلِيَاءُ لِلَّهِ That you are the friends of Allah. مِنْ دُونِ nas That you are the friends of Allah rather than the rest of the people. فَتَمَنَّوا الْمَوْتَ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Then ask Allah for death if indeed you are truthful. This verse is a proof that the scholars are friends of Allah. You think you are awliya of Allah just because you repented but you did not act upon the knowledge. The true awliya of Allah are those who repent and act upon the knowledge. So therefore this is why Imam Ahmed Rahimallah said the awliya of Allah are the ulama of Islam. And the one who works hard for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَتَمَنَّوا الْمَوْتَ And seek death in kuntum sadiqin if indeed you are truthful. So this is the test. Meaning if you are awliya you know that you are going to a better place then why not ask Allah for death? وَلَا يَتَمَنَّوهُ أَبَدًا And they will never ever ask Allah for death بِمَا قَدَّمَتْ أَيْدِيهِمْ Because of what their hands have put forward وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ بِالظَّالِمِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most aware of what they, of the wrongdoers. Meaning, we know what sins we have done. How can we consider ourselves to be wali? A wali considers himself to be a hypocrite and so he does more and more to ensure he's not a hypocrite. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ Say indeed the death that you are running away from. فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ It will catch up to you. So you cannot run away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment and His ability to take you to account. ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ Then you'll be returned to the world of the unseen. وَالشَّهَادَ It's called shahada meaning it is witnessed by everyone. وَالشَّهَادَ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ And He will then inform you بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ With what you used to do in this dunya. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا now this, these verses, remember, were revealed early. Yeah? Why was this revealed? Because Allah got very angry at some actions of the early Muslims. We're not talking about the Muhajireen or the great Ansar. No, some of the ignorant new Muslimin that accepted Islam at that time, 
their Islam had not really entered into their hearts. So Allah says about them that what happened was the Prophet got up for Juma Khutbah. When he got up for Juma Khutbah, he gave the, started giving the Khutbah. And then suddenly a caravan came into Medina. These early Muslimin, they went out because they're excited. They wanted to get to buy the stuff of the caravan, see what it's coming with, get the early prices, etc. etc. Right? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, oh you who believe, idha nudiya li salah, when the call for prayer has been given, mi yawmil jum'ah, from the day of jum'ah, which nida is Allah talking about here? The, the, the last one, not the first adhan, the second adhan, right? So in the time of Rasulullah there was only one adhan. In the time of Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he added a second adhan. Why did he add a second adhan? Because of the greatness of this, of this surah. Because he says so dangerous that you should, you should be in business. So in order to do that, the first adhan goes off about half an hour, 50 minutes, whatever it is. And then the, the final adhan, which is the, the main adhan that Allah is referring to here. Okay. إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ From the day of Jum'ah, فَسْعَوْ فَسْعَوْ meaning run, meaning hurry up, do it now. فَسْعَوْ إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ Then run to the remembrance of Allah, وَذَرُوا الْبَيْعِ And leave business and trade. Therefore, Ikhwani, this shows that gaining knowledge is actually the dhikr of Allah. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ That is better for you, إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ If you only knew. فَإِذَا قُدِيَتِ الصَّلَاةِ And when the salah has finished, فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Then go out in the land. وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ And seek the bounty of Allah. وَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا And remember Allah a lot. لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you may be successful. This verse shows that we should do business after, after Jum'ah, not before. And seek the bounty of Allah. The business after Jum'ah is blessed. وَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً And when they see tijara, meaning the, these early Muslims, when they see business, أَوْ لَهْوًا Or playful jest. إِنْ فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا This is the caravan, remember? إِنْ فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا Meaning they run to them. وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا They leave you standing. قُلْ Say to them, مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٍ That which is with Allah is better. مِنَ اللَّهْوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ from lahu, meaning from wasting of time and from business. The dhikr of Allah is better because that will give you more risk, inshaAllah. Wallahu khayru raziqeen. Allah is the best of raziqeen providers. Ya khuti, this is my advice to all my mashayikh, my ulama, those speakers who are used to having thousands of people in their, in their courses and conferences. Read this verse. Even the Prophet ﷺ gave a lecture when people were not in front of him and people had gone away from him. So do not be of those people who only come to conferences and lectures when the people are thousands in number. But also attend classes and courses when the people are less in number because it's humility for you, right? And a raising of levels for you. So here Rasulullah Allah Azzawajal humbled Rasulullah did he not? He humbled the Prophet of God by showing that people might even leave his class. So he humbled him but elevated him after that because he was firm on it and kept on doing it. By actually revealing this Quran that supported his cause. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب وأخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين.